This path through Mexico's tropical forest is cutting a rare ecosystem in two and dividing opinion. Mexico says the $20 billion Maya train line will boost tourism and bring jobs to the whole Yucatan Peninsula. But environmentalists worry this mega project will destroy an already fragile ecosystem and damage archaeological sites and caves that were once sacred to the ancient Maya people. We need to stop this and we will be here fighting. With a launch scheduled for December 2023, it's a race against time to clear the forest and lay the track. We went to Mexico to see what price people here are willing to pay for progress. I see all of the dead trees um, next to the road. It's so sad because this is one of the last healthy jungles that we have in Mexico. This site is like post-apocalyptic. Roberto Rojo is a biologist who's doing everything he can to highlight the environmental damage caused by the Maya train. He gave up his job to spend all his time as an environmental activist. This area is part of Section 5, where the route travels south from the tourist hotspots of Cancun and Playa del Carmen and runs inland, parallel to the coast, through tropical forest. There is no official tally of trees that have been lost, but environmental organisations estimate that millions have been ripped up, effectively cutting the forest in two. This is far from the picture painted by Mexico's president in 2018, just before he took office. The Yucatan Peninsula is home to thousands of plant and animal species, many of them found nowhere else. This is the northern part of the Maya Forest, the largest tropical forest in Central America, stretching as far south as Guatemala and Belize. But a growing tourism industry and a rising population are putting pressure on the natural environment. Global Forest Watch says the Yucatan Peninsula lost over 15% of its forested area between 2001 and 2021. The government says it is planting 500 million trees across the region to compensate for any loss to the train line, as well as expanding existing nature reserves. But for Roberto, the damage is already done. Los periquitos. Hay animales ahí dentro y los mismos los mismos árboles son seres vivos y a mí me me mata de de dolor y de tristeza cuando pienso cuando pienso en ellos y y eso para mí es una de las cosas más tristes que he visto en todo este proceso la destrucción de la vida es lo más lo más tonto que podemos hacer los seres humanos destruir la vida y lo hacemos con tanta facilidad. Activists are not just concerned with what is happening above ground. This part of Mexico is home to a unique network of sinkholes known as cenotes. There are thousands of them on the peninsula, formed when the roofs of caves in the limestone rock below the ground collapse. But there are fears that any construction above or even vibrations from passing trains could lead to further cave collapses and damage the fragile ecosystem inside. OK, I got it. <laughs> This is a ta uh, tailless whip spider. They can live in these places uh, without any light. This one, these are one of my favorite arachnids. These sinkholes have been sculpted by nature over hundreds of thousands of years, but some more recent features have been carved by human hands. Wow. This was carved by someone hundreds of years ago. Maybe more, maybe thousands. These are like eyes. This is like a mouth that has like this marked. The cenotes are a vital source of fresh water for wildlife and the forest above. We can see the roots of the trees coming down to these caves to find their water. All of this ecosystem, the jungle, the caves, the coral reef, they work together in a very uh, fine equilibrium and we are destroying this equilibrium. 
It's thought that less than 20% of Yucatan's caves have been explored. We are just in the center of the path of the Maya train. It goes in this direction. This is a Maya shrine at the entrance to a cave called Ocho Balas. The ancient Maya people had a deep relationship with these underground caverns, which connected them to their gods and ancestors. Caves are associated with birth, with emergence. They're the dwelling places of the gods. They would throw offerings into the pools of water, which were seen as gateways to the underworld. The Maya civilization controlled large parts of Central America, reaching its peak in the first millennium AD. Today, the Yucatan is littered with traces of Maya cities, temples, and carvings. New discoveries are being made all the time. Archaeological treasures like this are granted a special status, meaning the train line either needs to be diverted or elevated to avoid causing any damage. Along the southern part of Section 5, around 40 kilometers of track will be raised off the ground. In places, deep shafts are being sunk into the ground and filled with concrete to ensure it is stable enough to support the track. Along the route, hundreds of thousands of artifacts have been discovered, ranging from temples and human bones to intricate carvings. And on that forest floor, obviously, are features associated with the ancient Maya, from platforms to, to pyramids to raised causeways and terraces and walls and the like. But those artifacts that can't be moved and aren't deemed to be of exceptional archaeological value will not stand in the way of the train. I think, to some extent, impact is unavoidable and inevitable. These decisions are not made on the fly and they're not capricious. They're based on many decades of experience in trying to address that intersection between a very rapidly developing part of Latin America and one of the, the richest pre-Columbian um, landscapes in the Americas. This is section four of the Maya train, connecting Isamal to Cancun via the famous Maya pyramids of Chichen Itza. Here, much of the track runs alongside the existing highway. In all, 20 stations are being built in towns and close to archaeological sites, so tourists and locals can hop on and off. Soy Fernando Vázquez, vocero de Fonatur. Fonatur is the national tourism agency behind the project. It says creating a connected loop around the peninsula will lift more than one million people out of poverty. And a UN report estimates that over 750,000 jobs could be created by 2030 as a result. El Tren Maya va a cambiar la historia del sureste mexicano, que ha sido una zona muy olvidada del desarrollo nacional. Es sin duda una obra de grandes dimensiones que va a mostrar al mundo entero la riqueza que tenemos en el sureste mexicano. Mexico's Defense Department has said 6,500 security staff will be needed just to guard the track and stations. Eh, este es el paso del jaguar, ¿sí? Al igual, este, hay mamíferos como son este, venados, eh, mapaches, eh, tlacuaches. Here they're building an overpass to allow large animals to move from one side to the other. And here is an underpass for smaller animals. The Yucatan Peninsula is home to around 40% of Mexico's 5,000 jaguars. The cats are listed as near-threatened and can be found as far south as Argentina. But over time, their habitat has shrunk because of construction projects, tourism and poaching. Fonator says it is protecting jaguar corridors, but organizations trying to protect big cats in the region say the train will limit hunting and breeding areas. They also say there's not enough evidence to show that wildlife crossings like this actually work. Developing nations around the world are walking a similar tightrope, balancing the push for progress with environmental concerns, from plans for an international airport close to Machu Picchu in Peru, to dam construction on the Mekong River in Southeast Asia. 
Here in Mexico, UN observers found the consultations held with local communities fell short of international standards. And the Center for Biological Diversity says the environmental impact report was only submitted after construction had begun. This is one of the poorest parts of Mexico, and it's home to a large number of indigenous communities. Over 700,000 people still speak the Yucatec Maya language. These people living close to the train line on Section 4 are getting a chance to see the track up close for the first time. Mi comunidad ahorita de antes está abandonado, pero mi comunidad ahorita ya está mejorando. El camino ya va a quedar falimentado, ya todos los apoyos que llegan en la comunidad es mucho mejor ahorita. De antes no recibimos ni un apoyo, pero ahorita ya estamos recibiendo apoyos. Creo que por la tren maya que pasó, gracias que pasó cerca a nosotros. Fonatur is promising to bring local communities on board by paving roads, building health clinics and improving the electricity and internet infrastructure. But it's fierce opposition to the environmental impact of the Maya train that has suspended construction on a number of occasions. At one stage the line was due to run on an elevated track close to the coastal highway, but these plans were scrapped after pressure from hoteliers that's when the bulldozers headed inland and into the forest. In December 2022, the Mexican government gave the project special national security status, which the UN feared would allow the government to bypass environmental laws. La Ley de Seguridad Nacional de México eh, prevé distintos aspectos para considerar eh, alguna obra como de seguridad nacional, las que tienen que ver con el territorio, con el resguardo de la población. We need to stop this and we will be here fighting as long as we can because this is what we must do. There is no other option. This is our choice, this is our life and this is our jungle. This cave is called Las Manitas. Spanish for small hands. The prints made by the Maya people are still visible on the ceiling. This site is also being protected, but Roberto knows many sites along the route may not be so fortunate. And today I realized that this is like a ritual. It's like saying goodbye to the caves, to the, to the animals, the insects, the bats, the jungle. And then I realized that, that I, I, I don't want to leave this place because I don't know when I come back how it's going to look like if we we're going to still have jungle, if we we're going to still have these amazing caves, 